Max and Shirley are there chatting to Owen. As I mentioned, Owen's going to talk about his experience as well, as well which, which is great. Our thanks to Max and to Shirley. I suppose when you hear these stories, everybody's story is very personal, but I guess there are also shared experiences too. Yeah, absolutely, Rog. It's, it's been really interesting, you know, working on these items that we've got going out this week on the programme, because, as you say, the kind of act of coming out is in many ways a shared experience, but mm. the individual story is uh, different for everyone, and it's been lovely meeting everyone who we've got on the programme and hearing those stories, because they really are very individual. And what was it like for you? Oh, my gosh, it was it was really bizarre. It feels like such a long time ago now, Rog, you know, but mm. I grew up in a place called Ammonford in south-west Wales, very similar to a lot of our towns here in the north-west, in that it's, you know, an ex-mining town, ex-industries. I grew up in a very kind of working-class family. And for me... Um, I was around a lot of cars and motorbikes as a child, you know. Drums. Drums, <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of mechanics in my families, you know, I used to ride motorbikes. So without wanting to stereotype it too much, it was very kind of masculine in that mm. respect, you know. Um, I'm very lucky. I've got a great relationship with my parents. I've got the most amazing parents who have always been very supportive. But coming out was difficult because I didn't see any of that in the community, you know. I felt, mm. literally felt like the only gay in the village. So mm. it was really hard, but I had good friends, but it, it was really difficult, absolutely. I'm sure your parents are very proud of you, I have to say, <laughs> they, they, quite rightly. Oh, thanks, um, right. What was it like when you started work? Because obviously you moved from mm -hmm. there and, you know, you've worked in, you're obviously now in the northwest, but you've worked in big cities. Haven't yeah, you? I have. So I got a job when I was 18 with BBC Wales, presenting a children's news programme. And, oh, my gosh, look at that. <laughs> look at the hair, Rog. The hair's improved. Do you like the long sleeve T-shirt underneath the short sleeve ensemble as well? That was a look. Oh, gosh, I can't even look at it. I've got one of those at um, <laughs> um, I, When I got that job, you know, um, one of the youngest staff presenters the BBC ever employed at the time, um, I had come out, but I had to go back into the closet because I felt like it was a very high-profile job. Um, Again, I wasn't seeing representation around me, so I felt like it wasn't a place for somebody like me. So I didn't really tell people that I was gay then, and I went back into the closet. Is it more accepted now? Yes, absolutely, Roger. We've come a long way, you know. And, I'm, you know, even me having this chat with you on this programme is something I could never have imagined would have happened when I was younger. So I'm very grateful for this. It's fab. I do think things have come a long, long way, but I still think we have a long way to go, unfortunately. You know, I still get homophobic messages on Twitter. Um, and, you know, homophobia hasn't gone, unfortunately. Mm. But we're making big steps and, you know, that's, that's great. Well, we've got some really interesting films that you've made for the course of the week. We're really grateful to you. Thank you for talking so openly. And you Thank know you, very well everyone out there adores you. Oh, <laughs> There's no kind. doubt about that. That's thank like, you, Rob. As they always tell me whenever I meet them. Oh, I'm, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm back with the weather forecaster in just a, a short moment's time. So.